Hello, I'm Vivian McGrath from VivianMcGrath.com and in this video I'm going to be talking about dating red flags and those warning signs that you need to heed and run a mile from. Now I know a lot of you have recovered from or are well on the way to recovery from abusive relationships but it is really worth going over them again because even after you've recovered even years after you've recovered, you can still be blindsided by covert narcissists, people that you have no idea anything like your ex, suddenly coming into your life and pressing old buttons. And what do you know? You feel drawn by this person. You can't work out why. And as long as you just remember those warning signs that you minimized, excused away, uh, ignored when you first dated someone who was abusive. If you always have them at the forefront of your mind, then you won't fall back into the trap and repeat the relationship again. Because I know a lot of you have said to me, all I want is a healthy relationship. Why is it I keep seeing, you know, these people just keep turning up, they're just packaged a different way. Well, they are, and they can be, but the playbook is exactly the same. They are all the same. Honestly, it's weird. It's like they've got this playbook. So let's go through the red signs and warn, red flags and warning signs again so you are really, um, just don't ever forget them. And the, the, the biggest one is love bombing. A healthy relationship builds gradually. You get to know each other as friends and then you, you build that relationship and that trust gradually. In a relationship with a narcissist, it will be full on very, very fast. And if your stomach starts to think, whoa, this is coming on too full on too fast, too soon, then that is one of the biggest warning signs. Another one, of course, is when they're aggressively romantic. And by that I mean they just shower you very early on with a lot of almost unwanted attention. They might start uh, saying to you, well, maybe not unwanted, but, but a little bit sort of over the top that quickly. So they might start saying, you're the one I've been looking for. You're the only one for me. You're, you're um, uh, I want to marry you and have your babies. They want to move in with you, you know, very, very um, uh, aggressively romantic. Like they'll bring you lots of, nothing wrong with flowers, but if they bring you gifts and flowers and just bombard you, if you like. I knew somebody who, this is a great example of aggressive romantic, uh, ex aggressively romantic. Within the first few weeks of going out with him, she went to his place and found that the walls were covered with photos that he'd framed of her and him that he'd taken within three weeks of going out with her. So that is, you know, aggressively romantic. Another one is if you look at um, how they treat other people. So, for example, when you're first dating and you're in a restaurant, if they're really rude and... Uh, disrespectful of wait staff and just generally disrespectful of other people then that's a that's a warning sign but an even bigger warning sign is how they talk about uh, their ex if they are constantly bad-mouthing their ex you know poor me pity party because my ex was such a B-I-T-C-H or, you know, whatever. Um, and even if they just talk about their past, another one is when they overshare a lot at the beginning of the relationship. Um, and they tell you, pour out this sob story of a really hard life, difficult past. Every relationship they've had ever before has always gone wrong. But, and this is key, they always blame everybody else in their life for their misfortune so if they're bad mouthing their ex if they go on about um, horrible bosses that have dumped them and treat them badly you know that sort of 
Firstly, being disrespectful to other people, but secondly, always blaming other people for what happens to them and their life. You know, that gives you a huge warning sign that A, they will be disrespectful towards you, B, you'll probably end up of their, as the ex that they're bad-mouthing, and C, that they are not an adult that takes responsibility for their actions, their behaviour and their life because they just spend their entire time blaming everybody else. So um, if you see any signs of that, another way to be disrespectful towards you right at the beginning is if they make jokes, but cutting jokes. Nothing wrong with a sense of humour. God, we all want to have a, a date that's funny. But if they're quite cutting jokes, for example, if they're cutting jokes about, uh, um, you know, like, um, what does your mum look? What does your mum look like? Because you know, I, I hope that you know, in ten years' time, you're not going to turn out, you know, some big fat, whatever. Uh, signals to you that they are going to body shame you if you're not this perfect standard that they expect. Um, if they start to make cutting jokes about just um, your family, oh, you've obviously had a silver spoon in your mouth all your life. You know, this sort of thing that's, that's a little bit barbed. The jokes are barbed and it's designed to sort of unsettle you but also test your boundaries um, and it's signaling, signaling to you that they have these standards that they will expect you to live up to and if you don't then they will turn on you. Another big warning sign is if they play games very early on because talk about testing your boundaries one way to do that is they play games very early on so, for example, they'll keep you waiting on a date for half an hour, but there's no explanation as to, you know, that I'm going to be late. Sorry, I, I am going to be there, but I am going to be late for this reason. I can't help being this late. They just don't mention it. Turn up 30 minutes late. Or they go on about, I'm dying to see you this weekend. Be fantastic. Look forward to it. And you're sitting there waiting, and then they never call. So... Huge red flag is the game playing because that's testing boundaries again. They're testing to see what level of behavior you'll, well, what level of bad behavior you'll accept. Um, but another one is that sort of, if they talk the talk, but never walk the walk. I always say, don't watch what these people say, watch what they do. Oh, there's a great quote. I love it. You'll, put, you'll know this, I'm sure. Ma Maya Angelou said, when a person shows you who they are the first time, believe them. People show you who they are the first time. Watch them. So watch what they do. And if they're saying to you, I can't wait to see you this weekend. I'm, it's going to be great. And then they just don't call. Well, they're full of mouth. That's a polite way of saying BS. They just talk, 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 but they don't walk the walk. Now you don't want a virtual relationship. You want a real relationship with someone who is ready and willing to um, commit and have their actions match their words. So if their actions don't match their words, huge warning sign. Sorry, I'm sort of going jumping all over the place, but anyway, another one is jealousy. These are all in my head. Honestly, when I meet people, it's almost like a bing, 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 bing. And I can see, oh, they're all talk, they're no action. And, you know, you want to get to the point where these are just in your head and you've got a little alarm bell going bing, bing, bing. Oh, this person is going on and on and on about their ex. They're whinging, they're moaning, it's a pity party. Poor me, everyone and everything in my life has conspired to dump on, you know, all these things that make me just go bing, bing, bing. Another one is jealousy. Jealousy. 
you know, just subtle signs of jealousy at the start. So you might be on one of your first dates and somebody f calls on your phone and they've seen the name come up as a man or a woman if, if they're a man. Um, what? That didn't make sense, but you know what I mean. Um, and then they start going, grilling you. Oh, was that a past boyfriend? Did you have, have you had sex with them? You know, if they, they inappropriately start showing little glimmers of jealousy, and it could be jealousy about anything, your family. They might start making barbed jokes about, oh, you're just so molly, molly coddle with your family. Haven't you broken away from your parents yet? You know, you might have a really close family, but they don't like that and they get jealous of that. So they, or, or your friends, you know, they start saying things like, oh, well, you know, we've only just met. Can't I have you to myself this week? Do you have to go to your regular boys' night out, girls' night out this week? You know, I'd really love to have you to myself to get, you know, that sort of stuff is actually signs of jealousy. And it's also signs that they want to isolate you from family and friends. And that's another very big warning sign that need to isolate you because you become weaker. It's like the animals in the Masai Mara in Africa. What do the lions do? They pick off a weak one and they isolate them from the pack, from the, the, the herd. And when you're isolated, you're much more vulnerable and susceptible to being manipulated and brainwashed. So isolation is a huge uh, warning sign. Um, another one is, uh, look at how they act generally in their behavior. So are they irresponsible? So are they um, someone who just goes wild spending on credit card? And you're, you sort of know that their job really probably can't afford that level of spending you know, then that is a warning sign that down the track they're going to be irresponsible with your money. Uh, are they someone who is has a really inappropriate, still clingy relationship with their parents, for example? There's nothing wrong if you're 34 and you still live with your parents, you know, especially in this era where it is can be quite difficult to buy your own home or whatever. That's not the same thing, but if they have this really sort of clingy relationship and, and you know, that you get told, well, my mother thinks you're this, or my mother that, and you think, oh, you know, that could be a slight sign of a, that she's going to become a flying monkey down the track. You know, there's that, that sort of weird clingy connection that they haven't really broken away from their, their parent. Um, anyway, so... I think that's all on my list, uh, you know, love bombing, how they treat others, how they treat you, do they play games, isolation of you, um, aggressively romantic moves, playing games with you. Um, oh, another one is putting you on a pedestal and setting really high expectations. So really putting you on a pedestal that you're this Madonna, you're unlike any girl that's gone before, uh, gone, um, uh, come into their lives before. You're the one they've been looking for because every other girl has hurt them, treated them badly, had affairs behind their back, blah, blah, blah. They're putting you on this pedestal, the Madonna. And later they'll just pull you down and you'll become the whore, you know, if you don't live up to that perfect expectation of Madonna. Um, so the most important thing to do is remember, remember, when you go into abusive relationships, you have seen these warning signs. Every one of you tell me, and even I know myself, if I'm honest, when I first met that person that abused me, those warning signs were there right from the start. You minimize them. You excuse them away. You think, oh, they're really nice. I really like them. It just only, except for that one little bit. And you 
let that bit go. You know, um, you need to go back to trusting your gut. Your gut is really there to protect you. And it, as I said, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them the first time. And the way to do that is just be still. Don't project onto somebody when you first date them or meet them. Who all your hopes and dreams of what you, you know, your fantasy person, you really wish that they're going to, to meet the criteria of. Don't project onto them. Observe them, see them for who they are because they will show you right from the start who they are. And if any of those warning signs start to stir in your gut, listen to it. Your gut has been numbed when you're in an abusive relationship. You stop listening to it. It doesn't mean that it isn't still there. Sharpen that gut again and listen to it because that is the, your biggest guide in life. And self-esteem and a really strong sense of self-worth are very crucial for you as well to when your gut tells you this person is showing me all these warning signs, bing, 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 that alarm is going off in your head. Then dig deep into that sense of self-worth and say to yourself, that is crossing the line of my boundaries. I'm not going to accept that behavior because if you're somebody like me who has a history of going for unavailable dysfunctional or abusive men, if you're a codependent, even if you've had years of recovery, and I can't stress this enough, years in my recovery, years after being in a healthy, loving, incredible relationship with my husband now, I've had people come into my life who they push all those buttons that a codependent gets drawn to and you you can be fooled by a, a, a narcissist in a shiny packaging that doesn't look like a narcissist in sheep's clothing the wolf in sheep's clothing and I've had moments where somebody's come into my life and I've thought wow you know they're quite attractive they're the, and then I've immediately known Danger, 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 Will Robinson. That person isn't somebody who's not good for me. You know, you're, if you're once a codependent, there is the, um, there is the um, predisposition that you could be drawn back into that if that right person comes in and manipulates you enough. So I've had the sense to go, well, that person is danger. You know, think of it like an addict. I was a love addict to people who uh, were not good for me. And so a little bit like heroin, you know, decades later, you can still, as a drug addict, be, well, sucked back into that addiction. So I'm always on my guard. Um, I, I, obviously, I don't need to be now, really, after 30 years, but... but it's really good to have that warning list in your head anyway because I've come across people like that just generally in life because there's narcissists everywhere in your life, not just in relationships. So it's been incredible for me being at work and having sort of narcissistic bosses when I all those warning signs go blasting in my head, oh, this is somebody who is narcissistic. Then at work, I've been able to say to myself, right, keep your boundaries strong. Keep your boundaries strong. Stay calm. Don't react to this person. Choose, choose my response calmly that signals that I won't accept that unacceptable behavior. And it's really protected me in every aspect of my life. 
it's actually made me let go of one or two friends over the years that I felt were the warning signs were there in friends. Um, and I've let go of relationships that hurt me that were friendships. So really just keep those um, uh, warning signs very close to your heart. Those red flags and warning signs that people will show you right from the start if you are still enough to see them. If you are not projecting onto them who you think they are. If you're not seeing them and then minimizing them or excusing them. You really are seeing them for who they really are. And then you can make a very informed, rational adult choice as to how you respond to that. So if you're dating in the first few weeks of dating or even on the first date, if you are still observe, see those warning signs, then you can just make the choice, I'm sorry, that's not good enough for me, and walk away. Because if, you, if you're going to stay in that and keep minimizing and keep excusing and wasting your time and energy on somebody like that who's shown you already they're not good for you, don't try and make them a square thing that goes into the square hole when they're a triangle. Just see that they're a triangle. It's never going to work. Because if you're wasting your time and energy doing that, you're, you're, you're missing out on the opportunity of the square. I like That's a bit of a weird analogy. They, they might not be a square. They might be a really cool person. But you know what I mean. You, you're wasting your time when the man of your dreams or the woman of your dreams could be out there still waiting for you. So, you know, honestly, this checklist is something that will really stand you in good stead at work, in relationship with, with friends, in when you're dating. So they are my dating red flags and warning signs that really are red flags and warning signs that will just protect you and allow you to only let people who are going to up uplift you enhance you and bring out the best in you in your life. So I hope that's helped. So even if you're a long way down the track in your recovery from abusive relationships, just keep that list of the red flags and warning signs in the back of your mind or in your top pocket at all times and trust your gut when you see any of those signs and then make an adult rational decision about whether you're going to then walk away if that person you know is ringing all your alarm bells. So I hope that's helped and I really wish you the best with your on your journey navigating the dating world, which thank God I don't have to do in this internet world and Tinder and all that. But, you know, it's even more important in a world of dating with Tinder and all of that sort of stuff. You need to be really on your game and spot people who are no good for you. So good luck and I hope you find that amazing person, that square who's out there waiting for you.